those of you who are at least comfortable with it or you get it sort of, uh, I'm, I'm not an expert on this as I, I think I mentioned. And so if you catch me saying something that you don't agree with, it doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. It could be that you're right and I'm wrong. So feel free to, uh, to call me out, please do, please do, all right. So what I'm going to do is just get started with uh, the unit circle real fast and because that's basically, well, let me, let me start with something else here. Let me try that. But first I'll, I'll go through the unit circle and make sure, because if you don't get the unit circle down, the rest is crazy. But I'll just quickly get things started uh, with with this guy here. Oops, uh-oh. Can you see the block sphere there? Anybody? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah all right. Pull that up. So what we're gonna talk about is try to understand this thing here. I'm not going to get into the gates over here. Uh, save that for another day. Uh, I think what the way I've taught in my high school camp actually is I really focused on uh, just first of all identifying where this darn tensor is, where this arrow is. You know, that's a that's a science in itself. The gates, which you most of you have probably heard of, are me, are ways to move this arrow around. All right. So tonight. Before we, you know, before we would we'll save the gates and all that stuff for another day, moving the arrow around. Right now, if tonight, if at the end of tonight, you have a real good sense of t how to describe the position of this arrow or this tensor, uh, that's, that's the big challenge here. So that's what I'm going to do is just describe, how do we describe where this dot is on this big circle. I think most of you are, uh, I suspect most of you are familiar with uh, the block sphere to some degree is this three-dimensional space here. Uh, it's got uh, an arrow at its center essentially, starting at its center and then going to the surface of the ball. And so how do we describe that thing right there, that the position of that, of that uh, uh, line. So, let me see, new share. So you should see a Word document. So first, a few basics that are really important. Uh-oh, am I back in the world where this thing's not working again? Gee whiz. You know, this happened last time I did this. I use it every day for my class, and it's fine. Great. All right. So we're going to start with just a circle here, and let's call this the unit circle. And so the unit circle, unit is the equivalent of one oftentimes. And so what it is, it's a circle 
that has a radius of one. Okay, go back to your, your school days where you had the two pi r and all that kind of good stuff. So just one unit here. And so you just have a circle here with the radius of one. And it's, think of it, you've got an x and a y um, axis. It's based here and goes here. So how would you describe, essentially you want to think of the arrow always hitting the circumference here. So how would we describe that point right there? Well, there's lots of ways, and that's part of the confusion in quantum. Uh, there's, there's four or five ways that we can describe this point on this circle. And let me go over the first one. The first way is think of it as a rectangle here, uh, where at this point, I'll draw a line perpendicular to the x-axis, so straight down, and I'll just refer to this as x, and draw a line perpendicular to the y-axis, and we'll call this y, and since it's a rectangle, I can call that y. So this point here is x, y. So I would refer to that. So if the point was over here, uh, let's say it ends up being here and here, then this would be minus, let's say, 0.75 comma uh, 0.5, let's say, both x comma y. All right, these are minus, these are plus, this is plus, this is minus. All right, I think I'm pretty confident most of you are familiar with that. But so that's one way to describe where you are on this, this point. So I could describe that, that line with x and y. Now, there's another way that I could describe it. And this is all s greatly simplified because it's radius one. I could put this here. So I could also describe it by this angle here. If I, if x and y, and if I start, if I always start on the x-axis and I go counterclockwise, I could just refer to this as, let's say, 45 degrees. I think many of you have run across that somewhere in school. All right, if I, had, if I had the tensor over here or the point I'm talking about, I could refer to this as, you know, something like 130 degrees. And by the same token, if I had a arrow here referring to this point, this would be a negative, let's say, 40 degrees. Okay, so method one, I use the xy coordinates. Method two, I just refer to the degree. The, um, they'll use theta as the degree, so the angle. So that's one way. Again, it, because it's r equals one, I don't need to say anything else. I just say what the degree, the the uh, the distance is, is by de in degrees away from the x-axis. So now there's another way where, if you recall back in school, the circumference of a circle, I believe, is two pi r. For if you know the the distance, if you travel around a circle, what's that distance? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's two pi r. And the beautiful thing is r equals one. So the distance, therefore, in a unit circle of the circumference, method three, is uh, I could refer to the distance from here, well, from here to here. And uh, so I could, that, that's another way. So here I could just say this is pi divided by four. So if it's, if it's two pi around, half, half the distance around is pi, a quarter of the distance around is pi divided by two, and uh, three quarters of the way around is, is um, um, three halves pi going all the way around is two pi. And the same holds true if I say 
minus uh, pi over two, then I'm referring to this point right here. I'm going this direction. Got it? So uh, these, are, these are three ways of identifying where you are on the unit circle. And these three ways in particular, way number two and way number three are used a lot more. Uh, I found that once I started to get it, what they're doing here, uh, they're used a lot more than you might recognize, than you might think. Somebody had the mic go on? No? All right, now, let me, I need to do a little bit of trigonometry because there is actually another way. And I hate to bring up a bad subject because some people don't like trig, which is understandable. So if you remember trigonometry, which is the study of triangles, in fact, it's the study of the relationship of the sides or angles in a triangle. Uh, if you, you have what's called a reference angle and uh, you had this thing called the sine, uh, which I think is, if we call this the opposite side, I think it's OPP, uh, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse stuff taking you back if you haven't thought about it in a while. Um, so, and this is the reference angle. So it's different if I have this as a reference angle, but if I have this as the reference angle, uh, sine is the relationship of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the um, adjacent side over the hypotenuse. This is bringing back some flashbacks. And there's also the tangent, which, uh, boy, I forget. Anybody remember what that one is? Oh, opposite over adjacent. Thank you. I was teaching this to some high school kids the other day, and I, <laughs> I forgot what it was. So I, asked, I said, just to make sure you know, there you go. <laughs> All right. Now, the cool thing here is, ladies and gentlemen, is the hypotenuse in the unit circle is equal to 1. So guess what? And let's just call this theta, if you don't mind. So the sine of theta equals what? It's the opposite over 1. So no biggie. Cosine of theta, so the cosine here, is the adjacent over one. All right, now, so it's essentially the adjacent. So now look at what we did up here. Well, this here is x. This guy here is y. So you'll see a lot You'll see this a lot where um, uh, this is the cosine and this is the sine. So this point in the circle is referred to quite often as the cosine of theta comma uh, the sine of theta. It's nothing more, my friends, than X and Y. So if I had a circle here, and let's say the tensor or the spot is right here. This is one way to remember it, right? What is X? X is 1, right? Y is 0. And if you remember, the cosine uh, is the X item, and the sine is the y piece, well, then if this is zero degrees, then it's easy to remember cosine of zero uh, equals one, and the sine of zero 
equals zero. And that's one way to work sine of zero degrees, work backwards to remember, uh, you know, what's cosine and sine. And just, uh, just to remind you that, uh, what is it? So if I were to graph the curves, uh, sine, so this would be the sine curve where, what is this, anybody? Oh, I'll just fill it in. This is pi and this is two pi, right? Because you just take, you know, a unit circle and, and just kind of figure it out. So right here, remember this is pi over two. Well, guess what this is? This is pi over two here where the um, sine, this is sine, Uh, pi over 2, so the sine of pi over 2 is 1, and sure enough, it's right here. All right. Any questions or comments? Please ask a question if what I just said didn't make sense anywhere. We good? And okay, so if I did the cosine, by the way, if I plotted that, it would look like the, uh, so, uh, let's see, that would be over here, so. Something like that. All right. Question, anybody? Got it? So, hey, Terrell, I, oh, I, yeah. I saw that cosine sine nomenclature somewhere and it just confused the heck out of me. I, I didn't know what it was trying to tell me. So I, I appreciate you wrapping that into the, this explanation. Is it, this is quantum computing, man. It's surprisingly simple if, if you have the opportunity for, or somebody just explains it. Do you, it's no big deal. Now, <laughs> I hope. Yeah, now it's not. Yeah, good. Well, I, I don't care about yesterday. As long as in the future, you're good with it. Yeah. Once, once I, I saw this, I was like, oh, my gosh. All that, all that stuff, I just was blown away originally. And, uh, you know, so a, a lot of these um, algorithms and such, you know, they're using pi, pi over 2. Uh, uh, sine, cosine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you got, if you understand, I'm convinced if you understand what I just talked, talked about in the past 20 minutes or so, I mean, that's like 60% of the battle, I think, really. Another 10% is the, the sphere itself, because now we'll take this into three dimensions. But still, it's all about this stuff here. Gets a little dicey, uh, but uh, I don't think I'll cover the dicey stuff tonight because I don't know enough to explain it, I think. But uh, good. That was you, John, right? Was that you spoke out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Well, I hope the others, yeah, no big deal. So, so okay, so just to, you know, build on that, right? So you'll see, you'll see cosine of pi over 2 a lot. All right, so what is that? Well, it's just simply, it's simple once you get it. It's simply pi over two is here. So that's 90 degrees. And so what's the cosine of pi over two? Well, if this is the triangle. Um, Harold, you need to switch back to showing the word doc. Oh, geez, I've been talking to my, oh, thank you. Thanks. Was that a mirror? Uh, David. Oh, David, sorry. Somebody, I just know your voice is, okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so I can, what's cool though, I can just go, psh, boom. Oh, wait a minute, no, I can't. All right, let me get back to the word doc then. So what I was saying is that, you know, you'll see things like, yeah, you know, cosine of pi over two in these equations, cosine of pi, 
you know, et cetera, et cetera, sign up high. So, you know, first of all, you just got to get in the mentality of recognizing that this is zero, this is pi over two, 90 degrees, and then of course this will be pi over four, which is right in the midway, right? Remember the Hadamard gate or the square root of two, one over the square root of two business? What we're, they're talking about right here, it's right in between, so it's 45 degrees. This is pi, this is um, three over two pi, and this is two pi. And don't forget, this is minus pi. Uh, so they'll refer to, you know, uh, so when they're saying the cosine of, of um, pi over two, for example, they're talking about, uh, well, let me see, I forget, I almost forget. It's cosine comma sine. So, so if they say the cosine, um, a pi over two, that means it's here. And so what is x? x is zero. So therefore, the cosine of pi over two equals zero. And y would be the other one, sine of pi over two, which is y equals one. Correct me if I'm wrong in that. I could, I could get it backwards sometimes. So that's all they're doing. It's just different ways of describing where that, where that tensor or, you know, where on the circle that, that dot is. Uh, let me go to another screen here. So on this screen, uh, this, so what I encourage you to do as a reminder or, you know, you just, I mean, I think these developers, these algorithm developers, I mean, their brain is, they've done this so much that their brain's just wired to it and it just comes out and they don't really have to think about it. And I think that's what, in my opinion, that's what each one of us has to do. And one way is just find one of the, um, uh, where is this? find one of the uh, tools on the internet and just muck around with it. Why is this not working? And just, you know, just get super comfortable with it. So here you can just play around. Uh, here's pi over two, you can just see uh, this is the cosine sine, etc. So why is this not moving? Give me a second here. GeoGebra is way, way cool. You can go a long way with it. You've used it? Yeah. For other things, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't move it right now, I don't know why. Because I got a bunch of people watching what I'm doing, so of course you know how that, what happens. Why is this not working now? Well, that's interesting, I can move that around. Anyway, um, I can put this in the chat later. I'll put this in the, uh, uh, the show notes down there uh, in the meetup.com and stuff like that because this is a pretty cool tool. Just can't get it to operate at a second at this point. Here, let me just refresh it. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, that's better. So I can move, yeah, now it'll work. So now, you know, it can move it uh, and uh, what do you think? Oh, there we go, okay. So uh, you can see the angles here. Just move around with that and get used to it. So if we put it right where the two are equal, voila, it shows up where pi equals four. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. And some of you have seen this before. Uh, in the Hadamard gate, uh, where if you take this, uh, where this is one over the square root of two or something like to that effect. So uh, it's it's where 0 0.7 and 0 0.71, so 0.7 is where they're equal. And that's where you get the state being, you know, at 50-50, um, probability of being a one or a zero. Uh, lastly, with the unit circle, and then we'll get over to the 
subject matter. Uh, you know, here's another one that is really nice. It's in Math is Fun. And, um, you know, here you can see this is a really useful concept. Uh, you know, mapping, I can't keep it still. Whoops. Mapping, you know, the circle is a way of representing where you are in this wave curve, on this curve here. Right, so if I move around on the curve, I'm actually, you know, it's a simple, the unit circle is a simple representation of a sine curve or a cosine curve. All right, so keep that in mind. I think that's a really meaningful way to think about it. So here you can see on the right side, I'm at pi over two. And as I described when I was drawing it, uh, you know, the sine, uh, is, is or the, the cosine is zero, which is the x coordinate, and the y coordinate one is the the uh, sine, and you see it all comes together here, etc. Now, and one last thing of note, I think this is interesting, is when you get to 45 degrees, which is where the Hadamard gate takes you, for whatever it's worth, that's where the sine and cosine equal. And therefore, that's where the sine curve and the cosine curve intersect. I think that's cool. <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So, and here's another one with just the, without the, uh, the sine. Okay, so we return to this quickly. And uh, I'll just start this a new. All right. So now go back to the unit circle. All right. And this is something that just irritates the hell out of the heck out of me. Um, but I'm working towards getting more comfortable with it. So this is the y axis that I referred to in the unit circle. And this is the x axis in the unit circle. So the unit circle now is on its side, okay? So if I take the, uh, so if I, if I put the tensor at the, essentially the equator of the block sphere as, we're as, as it's usually used, uh, I'm basically, now this is my unit circle right here, all right? That's my unit circle. And so it's probably be better if I swing it around like that. It's a little more familiar. So forget, forget the Z axis for a minute. You know, I've got the, the unit circle right here where here's Y and X. All right, so when you see the block sphere in its typical state, that's the first thing to get over. It's, it's just that plane that we're used to seeing on paper there is kind of flipped over on its side. And so we're seeing it as from a side view. All right, so if I have, um, let me see, what do I want to do here? So if I put this guy right here, here's the x-axis as, as we are going through. Here's the x-axis. And here's the y-axis, okay? So this guy here, now interestingly enough, they, they don't call that angle right here, this angle here, theta. They refer to this as, um, as psi or phi, one of those, psi. All right, which confuses me a lot. When we have the unit circle, we'll refer to this as theta. Instead, in the block sphere, the, we now have a three-dimensional perspective here, and this is the z-axis, and theta is the z-axis angle. And that confused me for a while. So when you see theta, they're typically talking about the angle uh, from the z-axis to the unit circle, I'm going to call it, or the equator. And that, that took a while to finally figure out. 
Um, so that's the key thing to keep in mind. And I have, I lost, I guess I lost my block sphere. My other block sphere. Hold on, let me get, look it up. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, voila, we end up on IBM, which is fine, which is good. That's good. So here we're at the block sphere again. And so this guy here, which I believe is, is, um, is uh, phi. Anybody great at their Greeks? Yeah. Psi, something like that. So this is the angle. So this is the xy plane. This is the unit circle. The equator is the unit circle that we're accustomed to, at least after today. And so that angle there, uh, as it, as the um, tensor projects down to the xy axis, that's the angle that we've been working with with the uh, unit circle. And then the the other angle is with the z uh, is the the angle from the z axis to the tensor. Now, so if we if we went back to the unit circle, the cool thing is I could represent where you are on the on the unit circle, which is a two dimensional space with one value, which was theta, right? That angle. Instead of doing the xy coordinates, the easiest thing is to just to just refer to it by the angle, uh, which which is this guy right here. All right, so you're representing a two-dimensional uh, position in a two-dimensional space with one with one variable. So here we're in a three-dimensional space, and we're and we're referring to the position in a three-dimensional space with just two variables, what I used to call theta, and but now what everybody else from the z-axis calls theta. So if I give you theta here and um, uh, phi, y that's all I need to describe where that tensor is on that, unit, on that uh, sphere. That's it. I think that's pretty cool. And so, oh wait, I know I have a, I have a word. Let me share the block sphere. I'll stop sharing that. So now I have a word document. You see the word document with a uh, block sphere on it? You good? So, so this is what I'm talking about. There we go. So this is this equator is the think of, I think of it as a unit that unit sphere I was talking about. Here's uh, the psi, the phi, or whatever, and then here's the the um, the theta angle. So uh, that's what we're looking at. So if I were talking about the unit sphere. This would be the angle I was talking, the, the arrow that I was talking about. And so now if I go three dimensional, I can move that arrow up or down, you know, around the box here in, in, that, in that same, with the same shadow, if you will. Uh, and, but this is the actual tensor in this case. So I, let's say this is 45 degrees. In other words, halfway through, and let's say this is 30 degrees, then I could refer to this as psi equals 45 degrees and uh, theta equals 30 degrees. And I've essentially identified where this is in the black sphere. All right, so by extension, I could also remember I could. Uh, say that this here is what was pi over four. 
So I could also just say, describe this as pi over four, um, and then uh, I think here, let's say that's 30 degrees, so let's say 30, 180, so let's, this be something like pi over six, so then I can refer to it as um, uh, pi over six and pi over four. So, you know, it's another confusing thing. They'll, sometimes they'll use pi over four, sometimes you use 40, 45 degrees. Uh, sometimes they'll, they'll do that. But the block sphere, you can identify it with just two variables. Um, Terrell, I have a question here. Please. So just, just um, I mean, this may be um, how it's done by convention with the block sphere notation, but I noticed that the theta that you're describing is off of the z-axis. And I know you said that earlier, but this is really opposite of how it's done in Euclidean um, you know, three, three space, three dimensional geometry. Normally the angle, the, the um, angle is off of the xy plane. So in this case, it's actually the reverse of that angle. Theta is the reverse of that angle off the xy plane. Interesting. So you're saying that it's usually here. Yes, exactly. Interesting. It's that opposite angle that we refer to as theta. So this may be convention. So we just have to be aware of that. Yeah. You know, I I think. Thank you. I I don't. You know, my breadth isn't wide enough to even recognize that. But yeah, I. That's part of the confusion. I think. Uh, so somebody coming from you know that field there might be a bit confused, um, but you know I, I, I think that's what, that's one of the challenges. So even if you do know this stuff kind of quite well, you know, our discipline messes with your head a little bit and does something different. Or I, in, I, go ahead. in geography, latitude is measured going up from the equator, not coming down from the North Pole. So again, it's yeah. the opposite convention. Yeah. And um, I think also in astronomy. So. <laughs> interesting. I, I, frankly, that's the way I would have done it. And honestly, I would have left X and Y the way I'm used to it, and Z would be coming out. But these guys, these folks have been doing this for 100 years now. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with there. But, uh, you know, but the thing is, you yeah, know, I think there's no problem with just rotating that sphere around so that the z or z axis points straight towards you and then the x and the y will be in the um, orientation that you were showing us earlier on mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't change anything it's just changing how you're drawing it on the screen or on on the piece of paper the, the and the fact that the uh, phi angle is coming up coming from the Z axis rather than the XY plane, I think is because in the quantum computing space, it's effectively showing how far you're moving from your, your zero um, ground state towards yeah. the one state. Yeah, which would be here, right? So, yeah. Yes, correct. Oh, right. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I'm sure there's a logical reason. I think you just hit the nail on the head, right? For, would it, so I think what you're saying is, you know, if this is the equator and we, we took this approach, it's kind of like your reference point is in the middle of nowhere. And so yeah. Yeah. it's better to have the reference point from some place that has meaning in this context than, you know, your reference point here. So, you know, saying it's 30, 30 degrees from here makes a lot more sense than if you said it's, 70 degrees from here. Yeah, because then you'd be saying it's 70 degrees from the, the mixed state. Or the from the equator, yeah, from the mixed state or the equator. Yeah. Yeah, or equal wow. superposition state to be cool. more accurate. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. All right. Um, so if we were to look at this a little bit closer and you know for we got a lot of bright people here so definitely correct me if i'm wrong 
But now, if you take that all that cosine and sine stuff, uh, now this is the x-axis and the y-axis. So uh, if I, and let's say, okay, so I'm just going to talk about the equator here, at the equator, all right? So I'm going to skip, I'm going to forget about the z-axis for the moment. So as I was doing with the unit circle, I was drawing the, um, the right triangle here. So what that means is that uh, we could also refer to this as sine of um, Yeah, was it sine was the x, wasn't it? So this guy here could be referred to as sine as the sine of the phi. I think cosine was, was uh, cosine. Yeah, thank you. Didn't feel right. Okay, so let me see if I can do some reverse action here. Oh, cool. Yummy. Oops. So this is, um, what do we say, the cosine. All right. So that's this guy here. And therefore, this guy here should be sine of that guy, right? Going back to what we did with the unit circle. Then if you looked at the um, tensor from the z-axis, then uh, we have this, let me see, this would be, we'll go to the z-axis. So I think I might have my drawing wrong here, but I th you get the point here in a minute, I hope. So this is cosine of theta, this guy the distance from here to here, and then, well, which would be this guy right here. Follow me? So this should be, I think, cosine of theta, that being theta. So this right here, sine. sine, did I get it wrong again? I think just the last one you drew should be sine of theta, the vertical. Um, So I'm drawing, so I need a third, I need a third jury to break the tie here. Yeah, I think you, you right. I think it's cause, just because of where that theta angle is on the diagram. So it's, so we're looking at it from the Z plane. And I draw this down to the equator. And this is the reference angle. One would have to be cosine theta, the other would be sine theta. Agreed. So you have both as, as cosine theta. Uh, well, this here and this here should be the same. And then this and this should Carol, be. I'm not seeing what, uh, I'm seeing the diagram on the screen, but it's not showing the pen drawing anything now. You're kidding. Not sure if it's the same for everyone else. Anybody else seeing my drawing, my writing? Yeah, I, I see the, your writing as well on top of the drawing. Oh, okay. But when you're referring to this using your pen, we don't see that part. So maybe your mouse, your mouse cursor might indicate what you're referring to. Yeah, okay, now it's reappeared, the, the mouse cursor. Do you see me scribbling? Yes, it, oh. yes. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe when the... I just get that out of the way. I'll stick with what works. So you can see me scribble. Yes. All right. So, so this is this is the tensor from reference of the z axis. 
We so should have a features? square, and this should be a, a right. Go ahead. So we're, I'm not seeing what you're referring to when you say this, unless you draw something. Oh. Um, oh, okay, so you're not seeing that. All right. <laughs> you're not seeing this or that. All right. So yeah, I got to draw then. So if this is the Z, this angle here is a, this is a right triangle. And this should be, this is the reference angle. So cosine is the adjacent, is the adjacent, right? Right. Right. Then, then that's, then I'm, I'm going to okay. stand by this. Cosine is opposite. Sine is adjacent. Oh, no, sorry. Is it? No, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> so cosine is adjacent. Yeah. Sine is opposite. Okay. So, so if we look at, see this, can you see this box here? If this is the reference angle, then I would argue that this is cosine here, which is this. And then this should be sine of theta, which is this guy here. Uh, and then this, this is on the xy, so this should be, here's the reference angle, here's the right triangle, or the 90 degrees, so then this is, this has got to be sine of that guy, sine of this angle here. With sine of theta. It's just uh, a direction of the same dot down. This is theta here. Oh, oh, wait a minute, folks. So if this is sine of theta, if we look from the z-plane, this is sine of theta? This is theta right here. And therefore, sine of theta is up here. And if this is a rectangle, then sine of theta is here. Then you know what? I just, could it possibly be? This is sine of theta, which is this angle here. Could that be equal to the sine of psi? No, I, th I think there's a slight error in the drawing. Um, the projection onto the xy plane, you're drawing it as if it's hitting the um, edge of the unit circle, and it should not be hitting the edge. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a radius. It looks like one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, good call. All right. Boy, I was going to say, well, that, that's cool. If that, if that, if there's some relationship there. Yeah, right. Yeah, this may this this may not be touching the the edge of the. Let me check. Let's see what a, a virgin uh, it, diagram. It will was. touch, but only when that phi is is ninety degrees or pi by two radians. Yeah. Um, otherwise, it would be inside, as George was saying. Yeah, it's actually yeah. They should, I think they, I think it would be a better drawing if it was something like that. Then guys like me wouldn't make that mistake. Because here it suggests to me it's, it's on the equator. Anyway. Cool. Um, and I'm going to just cover one more thing that um, I see out there a lot that uh, I'm not 100% comfortable with, and maybe somebody could help me get comfortable, and I suspect others are not comfortable with it. Got one more thing, and then we'll just end there unless anybody has anything. So, so I think 
I would say most of us are accustomed to seeing something like this. Uh, can you see what I'm drawing? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, something like alpha uh, zero plus beta one in direct notation. And of course, the constraint is alpha squared plus, I guess it's technically the absolute value, equals one. And so there's an alternative view, and I'll show it right here. Uh, where'd that bad boy get to? There we go. Um, so notice this E component, this E term up here. Uh, so let me, allow me to make an attempt to try to explain uh, what's going on there. And I'm probably out of my zone here, but uh, so be it. You guys can correct me, which would be what more than welcome. Let me just return. So there's an alternative equation Has anybody seen this? Yep. You comfortable with it? If so, correct me when I go astray here, please. So these are essentially the same equations. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they are. And um, get a little bigger here. So um, so I think it's useful to, to now that you know, we, under, we get the block sphere uh, correct. Um, uh, so, so let's say we had uh, one over square root of two. Am I uh, okay if I do that, folks? Where, if I have this correct? That's essentially uh, at, in the unit circle, it's essentially here. So if I took the cosine of theta um, so theta here would be pi over four. So if I took the cosine of pi over four divided by two, that would be pi over eight, right? And then this thingamajiggy, not to disrespect it, but Euler's uh, masterpiece. And then this would be the same thing, pi over eight. Uh, Anybody cosine of pi over eight would be? That's your root two over two, I think. Yeah. We'll get to this thingamajiggy here in a second. Whoops. Ah, oh, rats. So this would be you know, root two over two. 
Okay, so the point I'm trying to make here, and whether this is common knowledge or not, I just proud when I put two and two together. Notice that this is not theta. This is a uh, psi, uh, I'm sorry. These are psi, but this is the theta in the block sphere. All right. So at the equator, uh, this is, um, so this would be at the equator, this would be 90 degrees. And what's, uh, so in the unit circle, if I'm at 90 degrees. So remember, the, um, that's theta, which is in the, the cos and the sine terms. It's not phi, that's 90 degrees, it's theta. Theta? This is the one from the Z, would you, from, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is, is so theta. this is from the, the Z. So if, if the Z uh, is at the equator, then this term here should, this up at the top here becomes zero. So this is, whether it's a sine or cosine, I forget, I'm brain dead at the moment. But this term becomes zero, and at this, e to the zero power, of course, is what? Is one. So, if, am I making any sense? Uh, Terrell, uh, one thing on that, so that's, Please. this is Jamie. Uh, hey, Jamie. E to, yeah, e, e to the I, size, that's the phase factor. Yeah. And I believe that's actually multiplied on both sides. Um, so it'd be like times the sine and the cosine, uh, both of them. So it's one oh. times. Is each it over of them. here too? Yeah. So you could just factor it out of the whole equation and multiply uh, it times both uh, terms. Oh, okay. Thanks. So thank you very much. So that one on the Z axis is, is the phi. So, where's my uh, 3D? So, this, I believe that EI term is this. No. Am I totally wrong? No, it's, it's, it's yeah. the phi, the, the rotating axis it's this and on the equation that you had just previously yep uh, at uh, if you're on the equator theta yep. is 90 degrees or pi over 2 so a co but you've got to remember that your formula said it's it's theta over 2 so that's where you get the 1 over the square root of 2 term is everything on the equator has an amplitude of one over the square root of two. Yeah. And the uh, phase, the phi, describes the phase relative to your x and y axis. So this is the, the phi. So what, what, what I was believing was that you know, we've got the, um, uh, the um, you know, description. Yeah, the wave function We're, equals the wave function, alpha yeah. times yeah. Uh, the zero cat plus beta times yeah. the one cat. The alpha in there is sine of theta over two. So on the equator, those two terms are one over the square root of two. Agreed. Got it. And so if you go all the way down to theta 
is equal to uh, pi, then the, uh, the alpha goes to zero. Because pi over two, the sine of pi over two. Or I think it's the cosine. The alpha is the cosine, isn't it? So if there's the curious factor of two as you go around the, the sphere. When you go around the sphere, it's two pi. Is that your point? It's a, no, it's uh, the amplitudes, the alpha and the beta are determined by beta over two. You had it in a couple of frames ago. Actually, you know what? You guys can annotate, whoops. Wait a second, let me get out of that one, wrong one. Wrong one again. So. When you introduce the, the psi equals alpha times zero cat plus beta times the one cat, then you put that in terms of, of theta. That was the, like I think with the cosine of theta over two. Yeah, so, so I, I should have started with. So if you're on the equator, theta is equal to uh, 90 degrees, but it's the cosine of 45 degrees that actually describes the amplitude. Hmm. All right, let me step back here. I, I just need to understand what you're referring to. So, all right, so when I write this out, okay, is that consistent with, with what folks have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, that's correct. So, okay. So this is this angle here is this that's angle. The rotation here. downwards from the North Pole. From the North, right. Okay. So this is theta. Right. Okay. Yep. Then, then this guy which is psi is this guy here is here, right? Is the rotation around the z axis, yes. Yeah. Okay, so but so rotation around the z axis. So that is the if I took the units if the unit circle was at the equator, then it would be what I was referring to earlier as as uh, theta. Right. It's this yeah, guy right here, right? right? Yeah, they, they switch. Unit circle has different notation. Yeah, which is just drive me up a wall. So help me work this through then for everybody's benefit, not only my own. If you go, if you go so, to theta equals pi, that is the minus z pole. Theta equals pi. Yep. So theta equals pi, that's this guy, this guy here. So theta equals pi would be, we start at the z-axis, so pi would become all the way down here. Right. To the south pole. Agreed? Yep. yep. You're right. So the amplitude of the zero cat would be cosine of pi over two. Yep. Which is... Uh, Zero. Which is zero. Yep. So the physicists okay. do kind of a crazy thing there with the <laughs> there's a half that's kind of spooky in there. So uh was it Jamie earlier? I think it was Jamie or whoever saying that this term here 
actually belongs here as well. Is, did I capture it, that it right? It can usually, uh, Jamie is correct, I think, and you would factor out a phi over two, plus or minus phi over two, and the, ignore the phase, the overall phase of theta, which is meaningless. And so you just keep that phi on the, the one pet as the relative phase between the two terms. So we keep this one, but we just drop this one? Well, you, you, so, it, usually you would say, you know, it's, it's the difference between the two phases. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing I've seen. Okay. Yeah, all right. So is this more correct? Um, let's call this one, or this one, this one one, and this one two. So then it would be two minus one. I've seen that. Yeah, and the the and you're factoring out that up front, and it that's a meaningless overall phase. So what matter matters is the relative phase between two two states. And the relative phase you're talking about. This is well, that's. Yeah, this is relative here. That's what you mean, right? Yep. One minus the other. Um, that I can perhaps explain it to you going backwards a step and then maybe. It'll okay. I think you can annotate, folks, Please. if you if you want. Go go to the Zoom. Go ahead. Explain how, and then I'll try. Okay. I think that's you, David. Right. Yep. Yeah. The how do what do I need to do to? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so go to the Zoom menu, and yep. then you should see annotate uh, uh, a pencil. Let me just double check on the security. Hold on. No, I think you've switched that off at the moment. Annotate on shared content. At at the top of your screen, you should see a green box, and to the right of that, there's a menu that says View Options. And an option in that menu is annotate. Okay, I see it. You got uh, it? I see, yeah. Fine. So um, I'm going to go back to, so when you had. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's him. That's David writing right there. No points off for handwriting. <laughs> okay. Alpha bar zero. Yep. Alpha zero cat plus beta. One cat. David, man, it's pretty rough, but it's readable. <laughs> In fact, while he's doing that, I'm going to translate, if you don't mind. So I think he said... <laughs> is that first term after the equal sign and, and R?
Oh, that's alpha equals that. Okay. Beta equals R1 E I one. Yep. Okay. Substituting that into there and that in, into there. Sorry, I was talking and then gone on mute again. Um, oh. <laughs> it, <laughs> Go ahead. So, sorry. so, so if you if you don't mind, can you um, substitute the alpha and the beta into your into that equation over there? In, into so, into this guy. So yeah. Yeah. So okay. So so then we have. Right so far? Yep. Perfect. And R, is R radius? So it's, um, so it's the radius to the point. Um, well, so, because remember a complex number like alpha yeah. um, can get represented by on, on the complex plane, mm -hmm. um, so on an argon diagram by R naught e to the i theta naught, as per your previous talks about how to represent complex numbers on yeah on those diagrams. Oh. So R is a R zero is a, a real number. Okay. Um, and in this case, uh, well, to keep it general, it's for a qubit, it can be a, any value between zero and one, and Phi is a number between well, zero and two pi being the angle around a, a circle. So phi, is that what you've got there? Yeah. So uh, is uh, between zero and um, pi, you said, or two pi? Pi? Two pi. Two pi. Two pi. Okay. So that's, in other words, giving you your 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 radius or your and your your angle, which is your two coordinates on a polar plane. Yeah. Okay. But then, yeah. So for the block sphere, then R is one. So we lose the R term. So yeah. No, let's not jump ahead too quickly. <laughs> so Sorry. now. So I said, wait, don't uh, don't think as far as that yet. Oh, so oh, now, okay. if, if you take taking this this equation you've just written below my line over there, and factoring out this part, the R E that. Okay, I'm just um, going to write that out. So yeah, so if you can somewhere where you need a little bit more space. Yeah, I think if I move my screen, I'm going to lose your annotations. Yeah, your annotations are that's all right. Okay. Yeah, oh. well, that's fine because you've written the neat versions. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we can get rid of your annotations then since I tried yep, to go interpret. Kill them. Let's see if I can here. I can save them. I'm saving it, man. And then clear. Yeah. Well, you... Uh oh, now okay. I'm annotating. Right. Okay. So now if you rewrite so or as I said factor out that r0 e to the i phi 0 r0 uh, e okay so in other words so I would get so you have ket or, of phi is equal to so ket phi equal to r e to the i Oh, sorry, R zero e to the i phi zero. Yeah. 
then like a big square bracket. And then we've got a ket zero. The, actually, sorry, I, um, we shouldn't have factored out the r zero, only the e to the i phi zero. Oops. So, sorry, everyone. You're among friends, man. You're among friends. All right, so we should not have factored out the r zero. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that puppy should be in here. Yep. Yeah, okay. So we got R0 plus R1 e to the i phi 1 minus phi 0. Yep. And then, yeah. Pet 1. Yeah. And that's where, um, was it Dan? Well, I think well, that was saying... You've got your global phase and your your the phase difference between ket zero and ket one. So this is global phase here. Yep. And so on a quantum computer, you you can't measure the global phase in any way. So effectively, that's ignorable. And but you can measure the difference between the phase of ket one and ket zero, and that's that phi one minus phi zero there. And so if you just relabel phi one minus phi zero to be phi, then that's the phi that you see on your block sphere. Yeah, I, I was wrong earlier. I was thinking about that global phase that actually looks like it ends up not mattering at all. That relative phase will stay on the sine term. Yeah. So, okay, so then and and then there's more. So wait, wait, now, my my brain is only so much capacity. We must yeah. stop here <laughs> because I understand. But, Go ahead. Sorry. But I, I just thought that then we can do the the, the cos theta over two bit. The so now on the block sphere we've got R one and or R zero and R one of both um, ra radius one. Yep. So we can um, we can yeah, represent zero based on our previous conversation. I think R zero was the cosine of theta over two. Exactly, and R one is sine theta over two. Correct. Cosine of theta over two, and R one. Was is sine theta sine, over two. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And sorry, and when I said R zero equals one and R one equals one, that's it's so those it's R squared, I mean R zero squared plus R one squared has got to equal one, which is your probability normalization thing. So R zero squared plus R1 squared okay. so equal one. And that's, and that's when you, now you can understand why you, instead of R0, you use cos theta over two, because then you end up with cos squared something plus sine squared something equals one, which is a trig identity. Oh, and, yeah. Um, and then the reason that it was theta over two rather than just theta is for an uh, is a whole side discussion for another day. Okay, agreed. <laughs> Sorry to take all that time, but uh, nope, nope. when I eventually worked out what we've just gone through here, it made a lot lot of those it pulled together a lot of those different concepts for me. And, I, and, you know, that's the challenge, especially a guy, you know, where I am coming from. This is all kind of new stuff. Um, so this has been, yeah, I'm going to have to review this now. Yeah. So it, I'm not sure if you totally followed when I had, when I replaced alpha by R zero e to the i theta. But that should come from your complex numbers discussion. So when I replaced, what was that, alpha? You say? Uh, yeah, so like this bit over here. 
Uh, the out, so up, oh, sorry. Yeah, so now it's more in the middle of the screen where you've got alpha equals r zero e to the i. Yeah, this. Yep. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. So to me, that's straightforward because I'm used to complex numbers. Um, but any complex number can get represented by a, a radius distance and the angle rotation. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so this is radius distance, as you say. And then this, the E, I, is the rotation. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, am I, am I making it too simple if I, whenever I see radius, that's just one, so I just ignore it for quantum computing? So, no, because, um, in this case, well, like the alpha and the beta are complex numbers that can be any complex number as long as alpha squared plus beta squared equals one. Yeah. Because remember, alpha being the coefficient of the zero ket is, is the, the amplitude of the zero ket and the, the amplitude squared gives you the probability of measuring it. Mm -hmm. So the alpha and the beta don't have to have a length of one. In fact, they're generally less than one. Oh. Except uh. when you, your, your psi state is only made up of ket zero because then alpha will equal one or it's equal to ket one and then it's, and then beta's one and alpha zero. Okay, you gave me something to chew on. <laughs> cool. Hey, I'll let me shut up for a while and let you keep going. No, no, I'm dude. I'm done. I mean, you, you guys have taken me further than than what I could possibly talk about, which is perfect for me. I don't know. Is anybody left out there? I me. Mean, I uh, I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here. Oh, I, I just had one question for David. If 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 Daryl, you can go back to the screen, please. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, uh -oh. At the end, um, he switched um, the uh, the R zero and R one to capital R, and I'm not sure why. Is that are those? Is that just it, earlier? And when we were talking about alpha and beta, it was a lowercase R zero and R one. No, um, I think that was Terrell writing, and he just did a, a did a big R. But I'm a, no, I'm a, it's I'm the same thing, and it should be well, yeah. lowercase. Yeah, my bad. Thank you. This makes sense then. Then it makes sense. Good. <laughs> it makes sense to you. You mean down here? Is this what you're talking about with the capital R? Right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Typo. So, Typo. Typo. My bad. I didn't even notice. But you know, when you're. It's important. So I just wanted to make sure. But yeah. yeah this makes sense. Good. No, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, it, it's important when you're trying to understand it, right? Uh, if you already understand it, then you know the capital, I don't, and then you know the capital R and the little r are the same. That's, that's one of the challenges here. I, I thought you were talking about this capital R, which I was impressed with myself, exactly. which meant that it's a real exactly. number. Exactly. Yes. Here, here is just a typo, a right out. All right. No, that's just real number. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, well, R I'm, is an element. I'm not used to this math, thing, but that, right? That's. That's cool, right? Yep. That's okay to say. Excellent. <laughs> There's one more thing which I would be happy to tell you at the risk of blowing your minds even more, but it took me about two years to realize and get it clear in my head, so I'm hoping to save you that time. I, which is, I, I'm okay which, with that. Anybody else agree to save two years? Go ahead, David. Just, Just... If you bring back a picture of the block sphere, um, just I'm gonna, yep, can, so, can I get a clean one? So sure. Okay. Okay, and so 
the thing that took me a, this long time to realize was that was the different coordinates that are being used. The so that when you started the discussion today and you draw you drew that um, the x y plane and you had the x axis and the y axis. Yep. So yep, like that. And then so the x axis is orthogonal or perpendicular, in other words, to the y axis. Mm -hmm. And that lets you give your two coordinates, your like your x value and your y value, which specify the point. Mm -hmm. The the and so if you change um from well if you multiply the, the x coordinate by minus one then you you kind of mirror yourself across onto the left side yeah of that okay picture so um and you get a point that's minus x y right times uh, x times minus one takes you from here a to b yeah okay but you still well and and so if you if y equals zero so then like you've just got an x value and you multiply it by minus one but you mm -hmm. jump across to the other side so like if you draw a point on the x-axis itself on the on the right hand side plane and then times it by minus one you end up on the left hand side okay. yeah so are you saying okay if i'm here you see me and i multiply this times negative one i yeah, end up thanks. here. so I, i'm drawing it here. oh oh but, thanks but if you you got a point there which is x and then if you times it by minus one, you end up over here, minus X. Yep. But you're still basically on that X axis is my point. Okay. The, now, what confused me on, on the block sphere is you can start up here on your, your, your Z or your Z axis, which is um, okay. set zero. And then if you multiply that by minus one, you get minus ket zero, but it's not this point, like you don't come down here to the minus world and to okay. like two over there, it's not minus ket zero. It's at that point there is ket one, right? Whoops, yeah. Yeah. And so it took me a long time to understand Stand what was going on there, and that's because the block sphere represents um, two coordinates that are perpendicular to each other, being ket zero and ket one, uh, going in opposite directions from each other. So, in other words, ket zero is going up in the north direction, and ket one is going down south yeah but which is completely different to what at least i'm used to and i'm sure most of you are used to in the x y plane where they perpendicular to each other i'm drawing the little right angle symbol over there where where are you on this on block the, sphere or oh right here on the on the right or on yeah can you see yeah yeah or just screw yeah yeah and so when I was working on the block sphere and I was like multiplying numbers by minus one, I was expecting them to kind of flip down to the other side, like through the origin or, or the center of the sphere. Mm -hmm. But they don't because when you go through the origin of the block sphere, you, you're going to an, a, a perpendicular coordinate. It's just oh, not, so... so okay. So uh, perpendicular coordinates on the block sphere are actually in a straight line. Oh, I started to sniff something out like that. So, so, 
oh, okay. I don't know how to articulate what you just articulated, but. There is not a Euclidean space uh, in the sense we're usually thinking of it. <laughs> yeah. It's not free. Yeah. I mean, which if you also think about it, you realize that straight away because of the mapping that you're using when you define the block sphere. But it's, it's buried in my intuition is that orthogonal coordinates are, at, are drawn that way as well, or at least are not 180 degrees separated. Right. It's, um, it's kind of an odd, odd uh, construct. And I think it probably comes from uh, nuclear magnetic resonance stuff. Uh, and I did see that comment in a quantum mechanics book and I uh, didn't really understand uh, that until our discussion tonight when I, I realized, yeah, you got to go around twice. Uh, so it's theta over two, essentially. And yeah. if there is a physical beating sometimes to the phi's between the two, if you look at the time dependent uh, Schrodinger equation, the zero cat, basically you're, you're using a system with as a difference in energy, a small difference in energy. So the time dependence of the zero cat goes as the energy level, the E zero of the zero cat, and the, the time progression of the one cat evolves as the uh, energy level of the one state, the one cat, yep. which are written is E to the I, uh, over uh, let's see h h omega, h small omega and essentially it, it involves e1 is equal to uh, I think it's uh, omega 1 over or h or something anyway it ends up being the plus or minus omega 1 or e1 over h and you factor that out of the equation of for the uh, the one in the zero cat, and you're left with the energy difference. So the one cat is evolving at a different uh, time, the phase is evolving at a different time than the zero cat. And I think I've been kind of struggling with in what case does that make any difference? And one thing that I did do uh, a few months back is uh, looked at a very deep dive into um, uh, Christopher Monroe's uh, first demonstration of the C-naught gate using trapped ions. And uh, he uses uh, the, the block sphere extensively there. And you do uh, come up with uh, some of these concepts, uh, the theta over two and so forth. And, uh, but uh, that involves uh, really a lot of physics uh, in, I've got a PhD in applied physics, and there were about 15 things that I had to <laughs> dig into in atomic physics. So it was a lot of fun. But uh, uh, so when you apply some of these transitions, you had to be very careful to apply them at the right time, the right phase. And so I was kind of hoping sometime to get a practitioner uh, who could actually tell me, can they really, can they really make the phase, the time, that carefully so they could hit it with a transition uh, and just like uh, David said you can spend two years uh, trying to understand this stuff on, on your own and, uh, and I'm hoping to find somebody who can tell me yeah we do that or we don't do that or some kind of thing so, hmm. thank you yeah thanks Dan wow hey. Cool. And then just, so just to finish off about these orthogonal coordinates, so on the block sphere you have in the z direction okay. your two orthogonal coordinates being the zero and zero ket and the one ket. And then in the x direction okay. you've got or what's labeled here as x plus and x minus. Yep which are the two Hardamard states, in fact. Um, and they are both orthogonal to each other. So X plus is orthogonal to X minus. And by orthogonal, effectively, in other words, I mean that they 
you can there are bases that fully defines the 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 state of a qubit. So as I think you may have gone over already, Terrell, in one of your other talks, um, that you can represent phi e as equal to alpha ket zero plus beta ket one, or as you've written today. But similarly, you can write it as equal to or a different coefficient from alpha um, times the, what they labeled as the X plus state here, which is the one Hardamard state, and another coefficient times the X minus state. So in, like in maybe you would call it alpha one and beta one or whatever. Yeah. And then similarly, you can write phi is equal to alpha two using the, um, the y coordinates, which are labeled here as y plus and y minus. So you could have alpha two times y plus and plus beta two times beta minus. Mm. And all of those, so I mean, like you can work out the relationship between the original alpha and the alpha one and the alpha two and the beta one and the beta two and the original beta, which is just a tra change of coordinates between the different basis states. The, um, but again, the, the, the weird thing for me was each of those coordinate pairs being the x plus and the x minus, or the y plus and the y minus, or the z and plus and the z minus, they're all like in a straight line, as opposed to being shown at 90 degrees to each other. At perpendicular. You've got, to get your, you've got to get your head around that when you start manipulating the vectors or the tensors with uh, the, all the different gates. Wow. Okay. Are, are you saying this is in a non-Euclidean space? The, um, n no, well, I'm saying the, it's just how the diagram is drawn. So <coughs> you're, you are in a, well, you're in a Hilbert space, so it is basically Euclidean. Um, but the way that the block sphere is representing orthogonal vectors is that they, they radiate out from the origin of the block sphere and orthogonal ones are the 180 degrees to each other just in the diagram representation. Is the, bi is, is the block sphere itself just polluting our minds, you know? I'm, I'm almost inclined to say yes from the point of view of what I've been trying to say here, which is that it's highly non-intuitive, I think, yeah. compared to the usual diagrams we draw of like the X and Y axis with being at 90 degrees to each other. But the place where the box sphere does become very useful is, again, when you start applying the different gates and rotating yeah. the, the vectors ar around the block sphere. So you've, 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 at some stage, you've got to get used to the, the confusion bit. Um, but there definitely are some aspects of the block sphere that are non-intuitive, I think. I think a part of the problem was, I think it probably was developed from um, the study of nuclear magnetic resonance. Yeah. And you were actually uh, flipping the nuclear spins with uh, RF signals. And uh, so I, I, think, uh, mm. I think they're physically were pointing up and down uh, in a magnetic field. But uh, uh, I think that the current use of the, of the the block sphere is, is not uh, not intuitive. Maybe if you go away from that uh, paradigm, 
You mean MRI, Dan? Uh, like an MRI it, machine? The MRI makes, machine makes use of that. Yeah. Uh, but it's the, it's the early stuff when, uh, like, I, I, Robbie was uh, hitting uh, nuclei with the uh, RF fields and, uh, you know, rotating the spin on the nucleus and, uh, and measuring things. A lot of this stuff comes from back in those days. In fact, uh, for the isolated or the, the trapped ion, uh, when they're going from, from plus to minus spin state uh, and, and trying to get on that, uh, that uh, uh, equator, uh, they do what they call Rabi flopping, R-A-B-I flopping. Mm -hmm. And uh, the system can only, you know, it only is, you know, pointing up, essentially you're pointing down. But if you turn on the RF field for a time that's appropriate to get you halfway, you know, from one to the other, uh, statistically, uh, then you've created a, a, a superposition state, uh, which is kind of where the quantum magic comes in. Wow. Well, This has been enlightening. George, you've been quiet. Uh, coming from a math background, I find the notation totally confusing. <sighs> I, I think part of the confusion might be that some of these things are in the dual space from a mathematician's point of view. Oh, man, don't give me a new term. What do you mean by dual space? Uh, it, geometrically, the tangent at the the tangent at that point of the sphere, or in terms of linear algebra, it's a linear operator, not a vector. Um, George, there is a dual space, but that's the 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 space containing all the bras, as a as opposed to all the kets. Uh. Um, <laughs> the, the uh, so I don't think the things we've been talking about today are in a dual space. The different so I'm also from a maths background. The, but so the the difference, as I think you mentioned earlier, is in the um, R theta phi three dimensional representation where the theta and the phi are defined from is different to the usual maths definition. Yeah. Alexa, message off. But that's oh. the, but I think that's the only real difference here. The, um, yeah. Well, and then there's this, the, um, the the way that the a qubit is rep, it's the position of it, the place that it's represented on the block sphere again is a slightly non-standard transformation yeah. compared that, to what we used to going from x y z coordinates to r theta phi coordinates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely throwing me off. Mm -hmm. As um, Terrell said right at the start of today, I think that uh, most of this confusion is all around notation and being unfamiliar with it. And at least once I've got my head around the, what the notation means, and that even includes just what the notation of like a, a zero ket and a one ket. Mm. Like if you just say, well, that's in fact a, just a vector. Um, then it, it does actually become quite straightforward and it, it is all basic linear algebra by the, once you can get your head around the differences in the notation. So you yeah, just kind of hang in there and translate it back into the notation that you used to. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, that's definitely the notation is totally out there for me. It seems like you're splitting an inner product into two pieces. 
the yeah, which in a product because normally you, in math we would have angle bracket vector comma left angle bracket vector comma vector comma right angle bracket the, the this so, pipe, pipe and yeah. angle bra bracket notation i'm not getting it at all yes so if you add the pipe in the middle of your two vectors there then um it's the same thing and that is the, the direct notation but basically that is an inner product okay. so like map it in your head um including the pipe in the middle and then it should make sense yeah it's it's, it's a whole whole different notation and the but it's only the notation that's different they uh, like all the maths so once you realize what symbol is getting used as an inner product and an outer product and an operator and a vector then okay then it's all straightforward <laughs> uh, yeah oh, yeah okay so <laughs> assuming you know the math uh, so assuming you know linear algebra but, but which i'm getting the feeling george does yeah thank you that gives me yeah. hope i mean but we <laughs> in math we tend to do it without coordinates the, yeah well and in a way that's what the, the direct notation does as well uh, that yeah. it's it's abstracting it to be operators and states rather than matrices and vectors um, so firstly you can then be in either a finite or an infinite number of dimensions and secondly you coordinate free until you define a coordinate space okay that, that that gives me some hope as a mathematician of maybe grasping the physics yeah the i, I guarantee you there's hope <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you thank you yeah thanks guys this has been great um you know once again you know your this this field just humbles you like okay i i think i think i got i think i got this black block sphere enough to start to try to explain it and then you know you just suddenly fall down a rabbit hole it's like <laughs> you just don't get it yet it's just this is cool this is very cool and thanks to you guys you know at least for me anyway, I moved a little bit closer, a little bit closer. May hopefully cut off, uh, you know, I may not catch up to the two years, I think it was you, David, uh, you know, that you saved us, certainly saved me pr probably three years. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that, not to mention some others. But, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, thanks, guys. I'm, 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 uh, I don't know how to take it uh, where, you know, you guys who know your, this stuff are participating in these events. It really, you know, the basic stuff, it's really, I'm glad you're here a lot, a great deal. Uh, that really uh, helps out a lot. Um, you said, you know. Tara, you said something right at the beginning that I th totally agree with in every field of study and that is one needs to understand the basics things deeply yeah and i'm including myself in this i'm finding with quantum you know for for the grassroots folks you know it's just like anything you know don't teach me how to ride a bicycle or uh, don't teach me how to drive just give me the keys to the car <laughs> I, I i got this right and you know this is not the sport to try to do that in this is this is just so humbling. Yeah, at least I mean, for this I, this gamer. I definitely find it humbling. You know, I think to myself, "Oh, I know math, linear algebra, whatever." But it's once the notation shifts, I don't know it anymore. All right, we'll just have to get you a different. You know, get you some goggles or something, so it just <laughs> does the translation. So you, so you're happy, okay? <laughs> you know, we got Google Translate, so we need a Google Translate from physics to math. How about that? Uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know that could be. It's causing a blinder, or a bias, or a blinding to you. Yeah. Just like you know, I, 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 I if I was a 15-year-old, I'd probably pick this up in a heartbeat. 
like the old days, but not, not anymore. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I wish I was 15 again. The mind yeah. went just boom, boom, boom back then. <laughs> well, at least you're giving it a shot again. Sorry? That, that, that teenager the other day was extremely impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Hard worker. Hard worker. Uh, I'm teaching, uh, and I'll let everybody go here. It's nine o'clock, but uh, although we could talk for a while, I'm teaching this summer camp with these kids, and um, you know, Alex Khan and I, more Alex actually, we taught them the D Wave machine last week uh, in two weeks, and uh, just incredible what they're just absorbing, and you know, to the point where I'm, I'm fearful of me saying something where I'm wrong. And they'll just go off in a different, you know, a different angle, if you will. Um, but uh, uh, the teenagers that we have in this camp are just sucking this in so fast that um, it, it's impressive. Uh, if you get the right teenagers, uh, they don't have the blocks like like we do, I think. But anyway. Yeah, Taro, if, if so, I could ask, I just wanted to get hey. an intuition on... Um, how the block fear, uh, um, how it relates to, to qubits, because, I mean, the, the, um, the value of a qubit, is it on the surface of a block sphere, or you know, what exactly is the block sphere representing in terms of a qubit? Well, guys, can I, can I give my take on that and do correct me? It, I, think, I think the block sphere is just a, 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 illustri a, a visual representation it's it's not the qubit in any means i don't think at all it's just a visual representation for the math that we use to uh to uh uh affect the qubits i think and and i'm still trying to understand you know is the block sphere or the unit circle and its relationship to the sine curve is that and you guys could help me here please is that a direct map? Is that a mapping? So, what we're really doing is thinking about the wave function, but the block sphere or the unit circle is a way to represent that wave. I like that pregnant pause. I would I say that the uh, the block sphere represents all of the possible superpositions of the, these two uh, usually lowest energy uh, levels, zero and one, for uh, some quantum system. So you'll see sometimes uh, psi equals alpha uh, zero cat plus beta uh, one cat, where the normalization is alpha squared or the absolute value of alpha squared plus the absolute value of beta squared mm -hmm. equals one. The block sphere just is a ge geometrical expression of that uh, of that uh, unit uh, length, and that really is expresses essentially the probability uh, you know, that we're in state zero or state one. But it's a superposition of those two states, and it just says you can't have a more than one probability. So, so it's it's a it's a it's a visual representation of the math. It has nothing to do with it, it, it the expresses, qubit itself. Well, it, ex yeah, it expresses it expresses. It expresses it, I'm trying to reproduce it. So, it expresses that notion of a squared plus b squared equals one. Right. So the requirement is that those two um, variables must, when squared, must total one. Therefore, we got the block sphere. Right. Okay. Sanjay, does that make <laughs> any sense? So it doesn't, it doesn't represent anything, uh, you know, having to do with the qubit. I mean, but it's it's our it it's our way of visualizing 
the mathematical constraints around the qubit state. Please correct me if I'm wrong, anybody? Well, the way I was, what I heard was that um, it represents the probabilities, plural, uh, that the qubit can be in. So for example, when you said a squared plus b squared equals one, it represents a probability of both zero state and a one state combined. Um, and naturally they would, they would have to be uh, summed to probability 100%. Starting out with one, one particle in a you know quantum well or something, uh, and you trans translate that into the you know the next highest energy level or something, you'll always have the, a probability of one particle being there either in the, the lowest energy or the next the next energy state, and it can be in a superposition, and the uh, alpha and, and beta really describe the superposition. And they can be complex numbers. Yeah. Right, and and when it's in superposition, the alpha and beta, each each would be less than than one, but they would sum to one. Their, their squares would sum to one. Correct. Well, they well even if it was at zero or one, it would still sum to one. So is it is it correct to say that you know if a squared plus alpha squared plus beta squared equals one. That doesn't mean it's in superposition because it could be at zero or one. And a square, a alpha squared plus beta squared will still equal one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. could be in the in the, the. But but the but the notion that you have two variables that, when squared and added, must equal one. That's our basketball. Yep. Right. So, Terrell, maybe this may be another good way to Please. picture it. Uh, so, starting off from the same equation as before, of phi is equal to alpha ket zero plus beta ket one. Um, so, it's parameterized by the alpha and the beta, the beta. But because alpha and beta are complex numbers, alpha is actually represented by two real numbers being r0 and phi 0 in the notation we were using before mm -hmm. and beta is represented by two real numbers r1 and phi 1 but so in other words you've got four parameters that you you can play with but then you've got two constraints so the one is the fact that the global variable you can't measure and so you can ignore it and the second one is that the sum of the probabilities has got to equal one. Or so that, in other words, R naught squared plus R one squared has got to equal one. Um, and so given four parameters and two constraints, it actually means you've got, you can describe the whole system with two free parameters. Okay. And then you can choose whatever representation you want for that of which the block sphere is one representation and the two parameters you're using there are is the theta parameter and the phi parameter. Uh, and then again, the, whether or not the block sphere is a good way of representing those two parameters depends on what you're trying to do. And I think it's definitely confusing sometimes but it's also definitely useful sometimes. And the useful bit is again, when you start looking at how X gates, Y gates, Z gates, um, Hardemard gates all do their rotations and operate on the, um, on the tensors. The, but so we haven't really talked about that yet and so that's why so far we've only talked about all the confusing things in the <laughs> block sphere. The, but if you start thinking about or investigating how like the X gate does a rotation around the X axis on the block sphere, etc., cetera, then, then it all starts making sense. And then you'll also see why it's theta over two instead of theta in the definition. Um, so, to me, that's why there's the, the box sphere is just a representation 
of two free parameters, which is basically saying right. they your latitude and longitude almost on the surface of a sphere. Because a sphere is obviously three dimensional, but again, when you constrain yourself onto the surface, then you only need two parameters. Yeah, I mean, and then mm -hmm. go ahead. To at the risk of blowing everyone's mind again, <laughs> um, the radius doesn't always have to be one. Oh, <laughs> the oh. It's, everything we've talked about is a pure quantum state state and in that case the radius is one but there is something called mixed quantum states which are effectively superpositions of the pure states and then um, <laughs> they're all less than one because again they all need to eventually sum up to one but that's uh, the more advanced stuff I, I'm getting static in my earphones man <laughs> are you serious Yep, but oh. so the good news is if you're talking about pure quantum states, which all the, most of the time we all will be, it is equal to one. So you breathe a sigh of relief. But I know there's something else out there now, so I'm always going to be curious about it. Yeah. All well, right. Look oh. up mixed quantum states, but uh, that's a whole new world of maths you've got to get your head around. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down mixed quantum states with a circle and a line through it. Good plan. Yeah. Uh, Sanjay, was that, <laughs> was that useful? Did that come close? It, it actually was very much, yes. Thank you. But Thank you, it, David, and, and everyone. Yeah. So, so in short, though, it, it, it's a visualization of the math. It's got nothing to do with the qubit itself, the physical qubit. Yes, uh, but you're, ve you're veering into philosophy there potentially, <laughs> and okay. what's real? Is the maths real or is the, the uh, <laughs> Oh, what a dangerous subject. Are we in a virtual universe? <laughs> All right, guys, I, I, I think uh, Zoom, my Zoom is suddenly telling me, uh, you know, look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, anyway, I think, I, I don't know about you guys. Thank, have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody, right, for thank chiming you. in, Jamie and Helen. We, we haven't heard of you. If, if you're still there, Deb, as well, good to see you. Sanjay, I hope you got a lot out of this. I think you're, you're pretty much in the early days, aren't you? Yes, with quantum, yes. Yeah, cool. cool. I'm strong in other areas of engineering, but this is new for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm strong. In other, yeah, I, I'm about a year into it, and you see how confused I am. <laughs> yeah, no, so Andre, so I'm actually an engineer originally as well, and using my engineering maths of or complex numbers and um, linear algebra, it, that's pretty much all it is. For well, and first year quantum physics as well. The, it's all the confusion around notation and terminology. So get your head around that and it's concepts that you're used to, is my hope yeah. for the future. I, I don't think the concepts are that hard. That's what I was trying to say earlier. That's why I'm trying to do this. You know, it, it's, I mean, just the cosine, pi over two and all that. I mean, maybe engineers, you guys deal with that all the time, perhaps some mathematicians, but us, ordinary people or us computer science or whatever in business I, I i haven't thought about pi since ninth grade so you know i got some retooling to do as i think a lot of others do as well so you guys at least have that i think that familiarity uh but uh yeah yeah i think we're all good at something else besides this <laughs> <laughs> as sanjay put it <laughs> anyway uh, good night, folks. All right. Good, good night. night. Thank, Thank you, you. Ellen, Thank Deb, you, good night. Good Dan, night. Jamie, David, thanks a lot. And George? It's good to be humbled. <laughs> Not if you get humbled every day. Anyway, take care.